All right, there's a lot to say about martyrs and a lot to theorize about martyrs. If you love the film, you may have trolled through a sea of fan theory videos about the ending and read a hundred different interpretations on Reddit, but that's not what I want to talk about today. It's been done and there's plenty of that out there already. Instead, I want to talk about the fact that the antagonist of the film, simply called the Mademoiselle, trips over logical fallacies and philosophical mistakes on her way to her truth. In the film, a young girl named Lucy escapes from a bizarre cult, the nature of which she does not understand immediately. She befriends a girl named Anna. When they grow up, Lucy goes on a rampage against people she believes were responsible. Anna is kidnapped by the cult led by Mademoiselle. The old woman reveals that the purpose of the cult is to torture young women to the point that they reach a state of transcendence and can glimpse the world beyond ours. Anna is tortured, witnesses something, whispers to Mademoiselle, and then the old woman kills herself. The end. What's amazing about Mademoiselle's theory and her lifelong dedication to the work of her cult is that every potential outcome to her life's work is either meaningless or unhelpful in her goal. The cult spends all its time attempting to prove the existence of the afterlife. Their goal is epistemological. Epistemology is one of the branches of philosophy. It's concerned with knowledge. You know, what do we know? How are we sure we know anything? Things like that. What's fascinating, or troubling, about the cult's obsession with discovering the existence of the afterlife is that there doesn't appear to be any goal beyond that. The knowledge itself is everything. They're not concerned with ethics, another branch of philosophy that deals with how we should behave. So let's look at some of the epistemological failings of the cult. If the cult discovers the existence of the afterlife, and they are absolutely certain it exists, what then? Which afterlife have they discovered? Is it equivalent to the Christian afterlife? If so, they are in for a rude awakening. Acceptance into the Christian afterlife is predicated on the behavior of human beings while on Earth. And it's not just the Christians, that's true of a lot of afterlife myths, going back to the Egyptians. If you behave a certain way, you gain permission to enter the kingdom of God. If you do not, then you're not permitted entry. Mademoiselle, based on what she has said, is not a member of any organized religion besides her cult. In fact, she goes out of her way to tell Anna that transcending and seeing the afterlife has nothing to do with religion. She's not a Christian, and her behavior of kidnapping and torturing young women would not keep her in the favor of a benevolent god. We don't get a lot of information about the membership of the other cultists, but we can make an educated guess and say that their way of thinking is probably similar to that of their leader. That's how cults work. Maybe the afterlife has nothing to do with Christianity or any other organized religion, but if that's true, how do we gain acceptance? If we learn that there's an afterlife, and that entry into that afterlife is based on adherence to certain rules and guidelines for living a good life, then the choice might be clear, but if we learn that there's an afterlife and nothing else about it, then this knowledge is not valuable to our entry into it. If this afterlife is based on following certain rules, but we don't know what the rules are, the knowledge of the existence of the afterlife alone is not helpful to our entry at all. Conversely, if entry into this afterlife is based on nothing, and that all gain entry regardless of behavior, then this knowledge of the existence of the afterlife is also not helpful to our entry, because our entry is already predetermined and guaranteed. Let's show this another way. Mademoiselle is trying to prove the existence of the afterlife by torturing innocent people. Outcome 1. Mademoiselle is correct, and the afterlife has nothing to do with religion, and therefore passage into said afterlife is not based on morality. Consequences. She and everyone else is going to the afterlife regardless of their knowledge of it. She and the cult have wasted their lives and inflicted incredible pain and suffering on others for something that was already guaranteed. Outcome 2. Mademoiselle is incorrect about the nature of the afterlife. It's governed by religious principles and morality. Consequences. She will almost certainly be denied entry due to her lifetime of torturing innocent people and not following the mandatory guidelines of a religion. Outcome 3. Mademoiselle is incorrect 
and there is no afterlife. Consequences, she will not gain entry into this thing that does not exist. In all three cases, her lifelong dedication to the cult is either meaningless or unhelpful to her entry into this afterlife. Consequences of all three outcomes, the effort and misery yield no helpful results. There is a fatalism when it comes to death and the afterlife, and though it may be scary, the truth is that our endless fixation on these concepts can yield no actual helpful results. Nobody knows what happens after we die, but if there was going to be proof of an afterlife, an irrefutable confirmation of what it takes to enter said afterlife, it stands to reason that we probably would have discovered it by now or have had the truth delivered to us in something more concrete and demonstrable. The idea in the movie that we can only gain knowledge of the afterlife through incredible suffering tells us a lot about how inconceivable the conception of an afterlife really is. Whether death is the end or the beginning, there isn't much we can do about it. If it's the end, there's no stopping it. If it's the beginning of a brand new life, the idea that we definitely know what it takes to gain acceptance into it is a bit of a stretch. Which holy book should we be following, if any? There's this very old story, Socrates meets up with Euthyphro, a man who is about to testify against his own father. Socrates asks if this is justice or not. Euthyphro says it is because the gods say so. Socrates was like, uh, which gods? When Mademoiselle and her cult dedicated their lives to proving the existence of the afterlife by torturing people, a fact that could not possibly benefit them for all the aforementioned reasons, they essentially wasted their lives. There's a lot of debate surrounding this film. Did Anna see the afterlife or was the white light only a hallucination? What did she whisper to Mademoiselle? I don't know. I haven't found any theory entirely convincing. Some say that Mademoiselle killed herself because Anna told her that there is no afterlife and her life's work was for nothing. But honestly, her life's work was for nothing, regardless of the outcome. Hi everyone, thanks for watching this week's episode. This was a weird one because I couldn't really just regurgitate everything that has been said about this film over the past decade, so I hope I brought a fresh take and that you liked it. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and also click that notification bell so that you never miss an episode. Click on the Patreon link to support the show. See you next week!